good afternoon and thank you for joining our WNCT Now Late Afternoon News Update. I'm Kelsey O'Donnell broadcasting to you live today from inside the digital studio with some of today's top news headlines. Hurricane Ada, certainly the hot topic this afternoon, is making its way up the coast, dropping heavy rainfall here in eastern North Carolina. Our chief meteorologist, Jerry Jackson, joins us with what we can expect for weather patterns up ahead. Well, our first alert weather day continues through tonight into the very early morning hours of Friday. Cold front has finally arrived and merged with leftover moisture from Ada. The end result has been a lot of rainfall. By the time all of this is said and done, most areas will pick up at least three to six inches of rain, but there'll be quite a few localized spots that could see as much as 10 to 12 inch storm total precipitation. Again, that includes what has already fallen and what may fall during the early part of the evening tonight. There's still a narrow window of opportunity for a strong thunderstorm, but that threat will begin to diminish as we head deeper into the night. Here are the two major players. This is Ada, or at least what is left of it, a former hurricane, now just a tropical system that is dying as it merges in with this incoming frontal boundary. And you see this moisture plume being channeled into the Carolinas. That will finally slide offshore late tonight into early Friday morning. So once we head an hour or two either side of sunrise on Friday, any potential for heavy rain or severe thunderstorm should pretty much be over and done with. Now, a few lingering showers or clouds cannot be ruled out during the day, but hopefully we'll see a little more sunshine as we head into the start of the upcoming weekend. Saturday should be a cooler day of weather, too, with highs in the 60s. Now, Ada is not the only system that we are tracking in the tropics. Theta is still out there. This system will never reach the United States mainland. Remember, you can always track what's going on with our free First Alert mobile weather app. Here is your forecast. Tonight, rain and storms around early this evening, lows in the 50s. After a stray shower or storm first thing tomorrow morning, we should begin to see some clearing during the day. Daytime highs will be around 70 degrees in Greenville, 70 in Washington, 70 in Swan Quarter, a little cooler up around Roanoke Rapids. For the coastal waters, seas averaging 5 to 7 feet for the ocean, 2 to 3 foot for the sounds. Choppy conditions for the lakes and rivers with a small craft advisory in effect. And you can see brighter days moving back in for Saturday and Sunday. Cool on Saturday, a little warmer Sunday. And then look at Monday and Tuesday. Temperatures start to crash with the approach of a final drier cold front. Tuesday and Wednesday will be in the mid 50s for highs with overnight lows in the mid 30s, so turning quite chilly at night. Looks like tranquil weather will continue into Thursday. All right, thank you, Jerry. As always, you can download our first alert weather app to stay up to date on the latest weather forecast. Now, out on the western side of our state, heavy rainfall is causing a tremendous amount of damage today. Earlier this morning, reporter Amber Roberts from our sister station out in Charlotte was out covering the flooding in Alexander County and saw firsthand just how destructive it can be. Take a look. Not too long ago, washed up here. This is incredibly scary! Okay, we're backing up, we're backing up. Just right here, live on TV, we saw the road collapse, that same road that we were just standing on seconds ago. So thank God that we are backing up. We are slowly going off of the bridge. We are slowly backing back as first responders continue to come towards this area to get it together. Back to you all. Now, Roberts and her photographer are safe, and some schools in Charlotte are being evacuated and were earlier today because of the rising water like you see up here on your screen. Emergency crews in Charlotte are working to reach people in areas cut off by flooding from these storms, not only just Charlotte, but the surrounding areas as well. Turning now to your school watch in Jones County, students were dismissed this morning at 1130 for an early dismissal and ahead of water levels expected for Friday. Those students, because the school officials say tomorrow will be a remote learning day again for all those students. Now, both in Martin and Lenore County, those students were let out at 1 p.m. this afternoon in Lenore County. They will operate on a two hour delay tomorrow due to flooding levels that are expected tomorrow afternoon and through the mornings um, through Lenore County. County. Also to note, Craven Community College was let out at three o'clock this afternoon. We have no word yet if they will be going remote learning tomorrow or in class, so we will keep an eye on that. Now, when we return, we'll have an update on two early morning fires and we'll take a look at how people are doing. Stay with us. We'll be right back. WNCT 9 in your side has a new feature, the WNCT Podcast Network. Stay up to date on the latest political topics by subscribing to What the Politics and get your latest sports information by listening in to WNCT 9 in your side sports talk.
Welcome in. If you're just now joining us, I'm Kelsey O'Donnell broadcasting to you guys live today right here from inside the digital studio with some of today's top news headlines in between our newscast. Now, one person is in the hospital following an early morning fire in Greenville. That person was taken to Biden with non-life-threatening injuries. Now, the fire happened on Cayenne Court near Charles Boulevard and Red Banks Road around 4 o'clock this morning. Three apartments were damaged, one from the flames. The other two took on serious water damage from trying to put out the fire. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. We're also following another early morning fire out of Jacksonville. Fire and Emergency Services responded to a residential fire at King's Richard Court near the intersection of North Marine Boulevard and Jacksonville Parkway around 1.30 o'clock this morning. There were no injuries. Six residents exited the home. The fire was contained to the room it started in and quickly put out. Now a cat belonging to the family was found hiding in a closet and has been returned to the family. The cause is also under investigation. Taking a look at the coronavirus numbers, we are continuing to track it across the state of North Carolina as it reaches records high in our state. Take a look, here is the updated numbers for today, Thursday, November 12th, already almost halfway through the month of November, but more than 300,000 people have now tested positive. 3,100 of those cases confirmed in the last 24 hours. Nearly 5,000 deaths are linked to COVID-19. More than 1,200 people are being treated in hospitals and more than 261,000 people have recovered from the virus in our state. Turning now to some good news, AAA says gas prices are expected to be at a five-year low for Thanksgiving in the Carolinas. If you've been paying attention at the pump, you've probably noticed you're shelling out a lot less cash, and these days, every cent counts. Now, the big question is, will the prices stay that way? Gas prices in the Carolinas are the lowest they have been in five years. AAA representative Tiffany Wright says prices tend to be lower during the winter months because less folks are out on the road, but now that we are in the middle of a pandemic, there are also less motorists that are out traveling. That will do it for our WNCT Now late afternoon news update. If you have to be outside, don't forget the rain jacket and remember to be safe out there. Be sure to stick around for our newscast coming up this afternoon at 5. Thanks for watching.